we're on time and it's time for our first panel. The topic is um, the challenges and opportunities of digital transformation for small and medium-sized companies. We've had um, some giants here on stage, but what about the small and medium-sized companies? They often make up the backbone of an industry of a country. The panel is hosted by the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering, uh, IVA, uh, and I would like to welcome moderator Johan Kolstedt, Director of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, with his panelists. Good uh, morning, you can say, some way, I think. Uh, it's so nice to be here. As you heard, my name is Johan Karlstedt, and uh, I'm Director for Innovation and Entrepreneurship uh, at the Royal Academy of Engineering Sciences. Uh, we're here today to, to talk about the project Smart Industry and what we have done uh, in the past. Uh, a project we started in 2016, in fact, just with focus on small and medium-sized enterprises in Sweden, just to help them to be able to use the new technology and digitalization as a tool for development and also to be a part, good part of the value chain for big companies in Sweden. Uh, what we have done really, it's very simple during these six years. Uh, we have a company competition uh, where we really want to find good examples uh, of digitalization work for small and medium-sized enterprises in Sweden. And we also had this business-to-business -business forum all over Sweden, about six cities every year, to discuss what needs to be done, what are the challenges. And the Swedish government has really been a part in this project since it started in 2016. So, during these years, in the company competition of smart industry, we have reached more than 300 companies. And we noticed one thing when we started in 2016-17. The discussion was really, should we be able to take part? How can we start working to use the opportunities with digitalization? About 40% were into this thinking, working right then. And nowadays, in 2022, 75% of the SMEs in Sweden say that we're really into digitalization. We are working on it on a daily basis. And the focus has also shifted. In 2017, 18, there was a lot of discussion about automatization, effectiveness of, with the help of digitalization in different ways. Perhaps something to work with the customers and be more effective in, in the intervenience with the customers. Nowadays, when we look what they are doing with uh, digitalization as a tool, or new technology as a tool, it's still about effectiveness in different ways. But there also being a change, a shift, we talk a lot of much more about new technology, helping to work with sustainability, find new business models, and so on. So I think it's been a really big change when it comes to Swedish SMEs and uh, the work with digitalization and new technology. And I have two fantastic companies and persons with me here today that's been winners, prize winners in our competition, Eva's Smart Industry Company Competition. Uh, I have Katja Lindvall. I think you weren't introduced really, but you're vice president and co-founder for Moving Floor. And Jonas Molén, executive vice president uh, of research and development for Climion. And we're so proud that you're with us here today. It's fantastic. So congratulations to your awards. And I think it would be best if you could start with you some time to talk about your company, what you have done so far and what's in the future. And what, what are success, success stories in different ways. Should we start with Climion, Jonas? Yes, thank you. 
So I come from a Swedish company called Climon, and we build what's called waste heat recovery generators, a long word for a thing that turns hot water into electricity. Uh, and, and these are used to produce renewable electricity on ships and in power plants on land. Uh, it could be geothermal power plants or, or in industries where you can use the waste heat and turn that into electricity. Uh, you may wonder what that has to do with digitalization. But the thing is that these uh, generators, they are often uh, located remo in remote areas. And you need to look at the status and see, see um, if they're running as expected and if performance is okay. So we've developed a, a cloud-based digitalization platform to collect data from them and make sure that they're running as expected. Mm. And your customers uh, are mostly... So uh, we work in different fields. Uh, the main one right now is uh, shipping or, or uh, ships. On a ship you have huge engines and they produce a lot of heat that's just wasted into the ocean. Mm. You use that heat and turn it into electricity, which saves you some fuel. Mm. Uh, also on industries, you just dump cooling water from your processes very often. That could be, could be turned into electricity. Now, especially in southern Sweden, obviously, this is more and more interesting. Uh, there are also countries like Iceland and Japan where you have hot water from the ground from, from wells. Mm. That could be used to make a green electricity from that hot water. Mm. This is fantastic. Thank you, Jonas. Thanks. And Katja, moving floor. Another interesting area these times, really, when it comes to agriculture and energy and so on. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you very <laughs> much, uh, Johan. It's a pleasure being here today. Um, we're one of the happy winners of the Smart Industry Prize, and um, we've gained a lot from this program. Um, our um, company is a, the first, actually, supplier of automatic cleaning um, for livestock, such as pigs and dairy animals. Um, so it's basically um, a solution where we have one hardware component, which is hard um, modules that we put into barns that have um, endless belts that rotates in programmed intervals and cleans out for the animals automatically. So we are basically transforming a very traditional industry uh, while the competing systems are all built on manual labor cleaning out for the animals. So our purpose is to, uh, to really help the farmers to develop in a more sustainable way. Uh, with this technology, we can help cut the CO2 emissions by 20% and also provide a much cleaner environment for the animals, which can help them to stay uh, clean, healthy, and not in need of preventive use of antibiotics, mm. which is a big problem in our yeah. industry. And you situated, uh, Climon is in Stockholm, not very far from here, <laughs> and your company is situated in Actually Gotland. Gotland, yeah. Gotland, yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, and we could perhaps touch on that in some of the questions, because we noticed that there are still two areas that could be quite challenging for SMEs in Sweden when it comes to digitalization, sustainability, the work with everything with that. And that's uh, one thing is the reach for competence, the right competence, uh, and get a hold on the right competence. And the other area is to get know about the new technology and get the hands on it and use it uh, in, their own in their own development in different ways. Perhaps we could start with, with competence and talk a bit about how you get uh, to you reach out for the new competence that's necessary for your work. Uh, so Jonas, if we can start and talk about competence, mm -hmm. how do you solve the need for your competence uh, in, in Climon? And how do you find it and attract it to you? So, so, I mean, wha first what you do is you, you collect a lot of data uh, uh, in this, and then you need to visualize the data in such a way that the user understands what's going on and so on. Mm -hmm. And so obviously needs uh, people that knows how to, to collect and aggregate this data, meaning typically uh, software developers uh, that use different type of web services for this. There are lots of services. And, and that's not so difficult to come by, I think. There are lots of people who know this area. There's lots of competence available, both to employ, but also uh, as consultants. Obviously, the need is huge. So even though there are a lot of people available, <laughs> competence is, uh, or 
competition is high. So, so uh, salaries are, are high and, and also consultancy fees, but it is available. Mm. So I think competence is there. But you manage so far to get your hands on the right people and to yes. hide them in your business. Yes, we have. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's, uh, it's been working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it easier w when you're situated in Stockholm, do you think, in this area as well? Well, there's a lot of education going on in this. Yeah, there's definitely area. a lot of lot of people available here, a lot of lot of competence available. So mm. that's probably a, a good thing. Mm. But that said, some of this work can also be done remotely. Yeah. It's typically cloud-based, so you don't you don't always have to have this kind of stuff in the office. Mm. But I think Stockholm is a good area. Yes, it's mm. good. Mm. And Katja, when you're situated in Gotland, <laughs> is it harder, or, or do you do you ha how do you solve it? With the confidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think on our digital journey, we're not as far ahead as climate, so we're in a bit of an early stage. Um, we've focused a lot on the automation of our product, and we're now moving into an area where we are sort of um, on a higher level of the digitalization, and that's where we really see the challenges now with the recruitment. Um, uh, it's difficult uh, with the geography uh, being located on Gotland. It's, of course, much more limited than, than recruiting here in Stockholm, we would yeah. say. Um, but what we also experience as being a, a smaller company in the SME <laughs> group uh, of companies is that uh, we have also a limited, um, limited resources in-house to yeah. be able to also um, evaluate the potential uh, partners that we are uh, to work with. In our case, we are not to recruit everything in-house. We will also use partners and also um, consultants, for example. But mm. it's difficult with the quality assurance uh, um, and, and this process of, of sort of um, knowing, uh, is this the right partner to work with? Uh, that's, that's really a challenge, being a, a small company. How do you go ahead? Checking the quality of your potential partners. Do you have a, something to tell everybody? You can work in this way or something. Yeah, oh, what we've done so far is that we have really tried to use our network. Mm. Uh, we have network in, in different um, like entrepreneur networks so from different industries, and that has been extremely helpful uh, yeah. to get key people to, to mm. help us uh, choose to, to really uh, ask the right questions. Yes, yeah. I understand that. Because that's, that's the difficult part for us at the moment. Yeah. yeah. One thing that we learned uh, during these years with smart industry is that a lot of SMEs all around Sweden try really to get into the innovation system, the innovation platforms, just to get competence for the right movement, for, for some limited development or something like that. Uh, how do you see, see on that, uh, Jonas? You, you're in Stockholm right here right now. There's a lot of big innovation hubs. Uh, do you use them in different ways? Or no. Well, I mean, I think this kind of work you do here is great because you, you, it open your, opens your eyes. I mean, you're always kind of focused on what you do at home, but you, when you meet these kinds of people, you see the world is larger <laughs> and you learn a lot. So that's one good thing for us. We also try to... Uh, work with academia sometimes in specific areas where we know we need a certain competence. Mm. Uh, not every area, but in some areas. Yeah. So we have done well a competence map of, of the things we work in and selected areas where we uh, where we use these kinds of hubs or academia to improve ourselves. Mm. So I think it's important. Yes. It's important. Yeah. yeah. And Katja, do you What's your opinion on the innovation hubs? Do you use something or the moving floor? Uh, yes, um, with the ge in geography once again, it's yeah. been more difficult on finding the right uh, platforms on Gotland, but we've tried to, to find it, uh, uh, what we call the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Stockholm uh, especially. Yeah. But I, I think uh, what's really important to highlight in this, I believe, is the importance uh, of... Um, of different uh, programs, uh, for example, the government I initiatives and also available funding within this area. I think it's really important to have uh, different initiatives where you can actually help the SMEs to, uh, on their digitalization journey mm. uh, because 
capital, the finance is needed. Uh, so these kind of initiatives are really important. And I think that also helps com companies uh, from remote parts of Sweden as well to get mm. the same chances to, to develop. Um, That's a good point, I think. The same uh, opportunities, if you yeah. play it right. Uh, uh, one more thing in this area, I think it's when we are in these settings and everything. You look on education. Do we educate the right people in Sweden today? Th it's a very big topic at the Royal Academy of Engineering Sciences, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas, how do you see on education? Is it, do, do we educate the right people today in Sweden? I or your needs? So to speak. I think so. I think that for, uh, for us, for Climon, we can find the people we need and the competence we need. But it's not only about education, <coughs> because, and it's on, not only... Uh, the thing is, when you typically in education you learn uh, basics and, and uh, principles, which is key. Without them you're, you can't do anything. But then you also need to be deeper in your domains, mm. which is sometimes difficult to do in, in train or in, in training on like KTH or something. Because one thing is that, so for the, the type of digitalization we use, you collect a lot of data in, cloud, in a cloud-based system, yeah. and then you typically hire what people call a full-stack developer which is a software developer that can, can do all these things and work with the uh, cloud stuff, and they know .NET and SQL and Python and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, and then you're very efficient in collecting the data and organizing the data. Mm. But that's not all. Yeah. For this thing to be useful, you need to present, to visualize the data in a way so that the user understands what's wrong or what's right. To do that, you need also to understand the process, the machine, or the, the, the thing that you are visualizing. So just knowing software is not enough for you to be efficient in this task. Uh, that, I guess, is difficult to, to train people in, in mm. uh, when you go to KTH. Yeah. So it's something we have to do. But I think we have a, a very good training. So, so this is just work, and then you're there. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is just work. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, Katja, what do you see about education? Do you think it's the right education in Sweden today, from your point of view? I think about agriculture. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because that's um, uh, uh, competence. And then we have digitalization. Exactly. If, if you're looking at the, the map of industries and, and see how far they come ahead in their digitalization development, agriculture is really lagging behind. Yeah. So um, what I can witness from our industry is that uh, uh, we are really far behind and looking, f um, for example, in AI. Mm. In our industry, if you go to China, you'll have huge players uh, active in the indus AI industry within our sector. Um, for example, Alibaba is making uh, Huawei, uh, JD.com. All of these are making really advanced systems for, for pig barns, for example. Yeah. We don't really see that happening here in Europe at the same uh, ah, pace. Okay. So what I think is needed in our sector is to uh, actually bring in a lot of new in, uh, innovation, uh, but also competence within this area, because I think we are not as far ahead as, as we think, <laughs> if mm. you're looking on a global scale. Yeah. Uh, so so that's, that's a really important um, part. Uh, that's very interesting to hear because you both both represent very interesting, important areas right now, as the world looks and everything. So, I think we should stay take that with us <laughs> with the agriculture education and innovation and everything. I think that's so important. Time is running, <laughs> as always. Uh, I would like to talk a little about technology. I know there. Perhaps it's a challenge, uh, some opportunities, so you need some things to be done. That's not done correctly today. Uh, we had this uh, seminar uh, or breakfast meeting, in fact, with the business council at IVA, and Erik Ekjuden from Ericsson talked about that 5G finally got this opportunity-based uh, a chocolate box <laughs> with different chocolate pieces that you can pick <laughs> right now. I think this was very beautiful. <laughs> It takes me back uh, to a very famous movie, as you know, I think you've all seen. Uh, but what are the hinders that you see today? You need to be updated with new technology. You need to get the hands on new technology. Uh, Jonas, how do you work with Climion on that area? Yeah, so for us, uh, we have a p uh, slide. If we can put yeah. that on the uh, screen here, I'll show. Yeah, so. 
for Climon, getting the competence, like I said, is, is uh, work, but not very difficult, so we can do that. Getting the data, however, can sometimes be more challenging. If you look at this uh, map here, it shows the installed base we have. You see that these machines are installed in Iceland, Japan, in Sweden, uh, on ships, uh, and so on. And we need to collect all of this data. We obviously use a cloud solution for it, so that is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But communications are not everywhere. Okay. These ships, they go over the oceans, and in the middle of nowhere, you still want to pick up data. So communication infrastructure, that is our biggest challenge. Okay. Because sometimes you have a very, uh, well, uh, thin line, <laughs> mm. slow communication, it's difficult for these uh, uh, systems to collect the data. Okay, uh, how, what do you think needs to be done with this communication and everything to solve? What do you need to so solve your challenges, your problems? Yeah, th there are lots of good things available. So like there are lots of cloud services like Amazon and Azure and so on. They have all of the cloud-based things you need to collect data and to analyze and aggregate and everything. Uh, lots of good microservices, but you need to get the data from the machine into mm. the cloud. Yeah, uh, that's the challenge. Okay. And like uh, in Sweden, it's typically well quite easy. You you may not agree. <laughs> <laughs> We're in different locations, but but where we are, it's typically on the industry. So you have they have uh, internet connection. On the ships, it's more difficult. When you're on the oceans, you don't have uh, good links. You only have satellites. So we need to to reduce our data in those in mm. those uh, cases. So that is a challenge. And if uh, it's also an international challenge, it's not a national. Uh, so, improving uh, international infrastructure for these kinds of communications, that would really uh, help digitalization in this area. What can you do? What can we do? What can the politicians do? Is so it standards or is Yeah, it standards uh, for, for these kinds of communications, wireless somehow, probably <laughs> satellite-based in some yeah. cases. So, international standards and, and development of technology for these long-range communications. Mm. Okay. Katja, how do you solve the challenge with getting the right technology into your products and services? Yes, we, uh, we also share this, uh, uh, this challenge. Um, we, we are in a more initial phase, uh, but we, we do see this as a problem on our farms as well. They can be very remotely uh, located. Uh, so this is definitely a challenge. Mm. Another challenge is, is really the... Uh, in our case, for example, focusing a lot on China as well. And what kind of cloud service are you to use? Um, at least for, for us, it's not so easy to, to pick one solution that will fit uh, the in entire global, uh, to have as a global standard. That's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So that's another challenge we have. Um, um, we're also trying to lo look a lot uh, into other industries and try to find other applications as such. Um, so, uh, but I, I think one one important thing to highlight when looking at other industries, technologies, practices is also the opportunities that we have as small and medium uh, enterprises. That we're quite good in innovation, uh, where we all often can find unique solutions mm. uh, uh, when we combine um, methods or, um, or hardware or software solutions from different industries, uh, combining them into your own solution, yeah. which can often be uh, patented, mm. uh, method patents, for, for instance. I think this is an untapped uh, opportunity that we do have in Sweden, where I really want to highlight this for other SME companies to to be aware uh, that uh, your solutions can actually be very unique um, and um, ensure that you are uh, checking that possibilities uh, for patents. You know. That's so true, it's so exciting. How can we stimulate this more in Sweden? I, I think we can actually do more, uh, perhaps from the governmental side, on when it comes to uh, innovation. For example, the Patent Registration Office, uh, they have excellent services available for us uh, SME companies. Mm. I think we, we just need to know that they exist. And, and I think it's really important to have initiatives where, where it's been uh, highlighted for the SMEs. Yeah. Mm. You can talk about this for a long, long time. It's so <laughs> exciting. You're so 
into this, and it's so, it's so impressive to talk to you. With, with what you've done with your companies, and how you see on things, and how you solve things. That's amazing. And as you know, we have a new government in place. And we have uh, the minister presented to us for industry and entrepreneurship and innovation. We usually have the, all these three nowadays. And Eva Bush tour. Uh, if you're going to please start with this. She's just arrived at the office. <laughs> so it's still time <laughs> to help her with her agenda for the future. Jonas, if you should tell Eva, please start with this. This is important for the SMEs in Sweden. So for the for digitalization, I think uh, infrastructure for communication is key. So developing nationally uh, standards and infrastructure for that, but also internationally cooperation and so on for standards and, and improving global uh, inter, uh, communications. Mm. I also think for uh, renewable energy, more governmental support to introduce that in Sweden in Swedish industry, energy efficiency and so on would be. Uh, not only useful, but needed for society and for the climate. Perfect. I hope she hears us. <laughs> <laughs> Katja, what's your recommendation? Please, Eva, start with this. Yeah, I, I think um, to add on to what Jonas said, uh, I believe it's really important to have uh, capital available within this yeah. area for the SMEs. Without capital, we, we won't be able to, to develop. So mm -hmm. capital both on a national level, but also to help the SME companies with these great opportunities that we have within EU, for example. There are yeah. a lot of calls. Horizon U, uh, EU, for instance, um, are great initiatives with uh, quite large funds available, uh, where I think, especially in within the clean tech sector, uh, Sweden has a lot of uh, opportunities. So, uh, yeah. Uh, capital, capital, is capital, capital. Yeah. investment is important. Sorry. Yeah, time <laughs> for a, a question from our audience. Absolutely. Um, this question is um, to you, Katja. Um, even though you're a small player, I mean, you're a disruptor in the agriculture uh, industry. What has the reaction been from um, the other players in the industry to your innovation? And are they welcoming the use of AI in more traditional tasks? I think the, the AI as such is, um, is coming more and more into the industry in general. But what we actually do see in, in our field of autom automatic cleaning uh, for the animals, it's we're still quite lonely within this field. Um, I believe uh, the actors within the industry is getting more and more uh, curious and, uh, um, and and more fond of our idea. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, another question is also to you. Um, you were, I mean, when you started working on this, you grew up on this farm in Gotland to get, and you were discussing with your father about should you and your sister take over? Um, but then you decided, let's do something bigger. Let's build something out of our experience. And the question is back to one that you one also had, but if you could be more specific, how did you get hands on the technology that you've now developed? You were a team of two, your dad and, and yourself. Yes, um, the hardware development is actually performed uh, almost 100% by our father initially, and then um, we grew our internal team. Um, we've also worked a lot with industry collaborations. For example, ABB has been an important uh, partner. We've worked with Autocompo in the stain stainless steel area, for example. So. Uh, different partnerships with, with larger corps has been really important for us. And now on this digitalization journey, ABB is a key partner for us. And now moving to the next level of AI, we're also trying to find uh, possible partnerships. There are a lot of the larger players in the audience, um, both online and here in the room. Um, if, I, if I can call you a smaller player, what's needed for a, an entrepreneur, a, a smaller team, to cooperate with a huge multinational, what, how could that that cooperation be easier for you? How do you open the doors, etc.? Initially, it's super important to have the platform. The first thing is that you need to meet them, and you need to meet the right person to get uh, to realize the project. Uh, for example, in our case, we met the, with the CEO of ABB for Sweden. In, in that case, and he 
got very interested in our project and, ma and made it happen. So I, I think it's, um, it's super important to have these kind of platforms where the, the smaller uh, players can meet with the right key people. From you the sent him an corps. email and set up a meeting? We actually met on a delegation, firstly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, so I think, for example, like delegations, it's super important to to not only focus on the larger corps when when we are um, uh, when we're traveling uh, or we're receiving delegations to Sweden, include the the small companies as well, because this is a really good platforms where where the larger and smaller corps can. Um, can network, yeah. Thank you. And with that, we have to close this panel. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Katja. And thank you, Jona, so much for joining us. Great insights um, and contributions to our, our dialogue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.